On this episode, we break out of the desert and into Yellowstone. As winter loses its grip, spring rains and sunshine create the perfect environment for new life, and we experience an ecosystem thriving. Join us as we experience the awe of the world's first national park. Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Jenny. We ditched the corporate world to spend a year exploring. And our goal is to get out and see all the incredible places and meet interesting people. And maybe find a place to put roots down. So join us as we explore both on and off the beaten path. Sometimes we'll be somewhere. And sometimes nowhere. In the late 1800s, the country was putting itself back together and an expedition was coming to an end. As the members sat around a campfire, discussing everything that they had seen, an idea was expressed. The idea was that this land was so magnificent, so untouched, so unique, that it should never be privately owned, thus ensuring that all people would have access to its beauty. Three years later, then-President Ulysses S. Grant signed an act establishing Yellowstone as the world's first national park. Now, 150 years later, that sentiment and wisdom has been applied countless times both within and beyond the borders of the United States, all to ensure that people around the world can experience the natural wonders of this planet. While few can name more than a handful of parks, one would be hard pressed to find anyone who doesn't know Yellowstone. To some, it represents the re-establishment of species once on the brink of extinction. There's a tan one laying down okay. and another black one. That black one walking, yeah. To others, a glimpse into the Earth's beautiful, yet harsh volcanic past. Still to others, it represents an opportunity to hike through landscapes seemingly untouched by the outside world. As we ventured into the greater Yellowstone area, our first move was to take to the skies. I've never been on a helicopter before. <laughs> When people typically speak of Yellowstone, they are commonly referring to the National Park. The greater Yellowstone ecosystem, however, is one of the largest intact ecosystems on planet Earth. It is made up of two national parks, portions of five national forests, three national wildlife refuges, state land, BLM land, and tribal lands. And seeing it by air is the best way to take it all in. Initially nervous, Jenny quickly settled in to enjoy the bird's eye view.
getting our bearings, it was time to get on the ground and go experience it firsthand. All right. Good morning, everybody, from the Fairy Falls Trail. In Yellowstone. In Yellowstone. Somewhat heavily trafficked, which for two brown bear rookies <laughs> is the thing for us. So this is our first pop the cherry hike in brown bear country. Yep. And uh, it's not gonna protect Dan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we've got our bear spray. They say to get it out in any area, make noise, and then get it out in any areas that seem a little weird. So we've had it out for about an hour now. So far we've zapped four chipmunks, <laughs> a bird. No, I love a chipmunk. And a little kid. Yeah. So we're well practiced on our aim. And uh, anyways, this brings us to a waterfall, I think they said too. Yeah, 200 foot high waterfall. 200 foot high waterfall. And uh, then uh, another geyser, if you go past it, that erupts intermittently or often so I, I don't really know what that means but all right we'll find out we'll find out we're gonna make some noise here yep so that we find out we are in the woods <laughs> yes <laughs> all right see you in a bit gotta find me a stick All right, so we are about 2.3 miles in, and Dan and I learned a fun lesson out west. Not only were we hiking with bears in the area, we were also hiking with a ton of mosquitoes. Skaters! <laughs> so like, I'm literally looking at the back of Dan's arms that are just eaten alive by mosquitoes. So do not make this rookie mistake like we did. <sighs> Put bug spray on when you go hiking, no matter what. We should know this, we hike all the time. But just a friendly PSA announcement, Sponsored you by all the mosquito propellants out there. <laughs> That's it. Look at those waterfalls. Yeah. Well, I think that marks the end of the trail for us. We're going to uh, turn around here. Hey, Jenny, you bring your mud and gear? No. All right. Wait, hey, Dan, I got an idea. We go back to the car. We put freaking bug spray on like we should, and let's go do another trip. I think that's a great idea. So, Jenny wins with the good ideas. Win. We're, we're going to uh, go put bug spray on, try a different trail. Ping. and try different trails we did. Over the course of the next few days, we hiked uncounted trails and boardwalks. Whether a short spur, a moderate loop, or a longer excursion, our senses were constantly adjusting to the ever-changing environment. One moment, the smell of sulfur would be so thick, it would make our eyes water. Shortly thereafter, waterfalls and rapids would drown out every other sound. And everywhere we went, our eyes struggled to keep up with what the environment had to show us.
so it is 5.38, and we are at a uh, pullover here. Supposedly the thing to do in Yellowstone is get up early to see if you can see or hear the wolves. I know, I'm excited. So we got up early. <laughs> it's a little foggy. It's 36 degrees <laughs> and foggy. And it's so. June 5th, and it's 36 degrees, which is yeah. so awesome. Yeah. So we're at a site that yesterday Jenny saw a fresh uh, coyote kill of a goose. So we're hoping the fog burns off a little bit. Maybe we can see something. We'll see. What started as a foggy, early morning activity would turn into a daily obsession for us. This ecosystem is home to the greatest concentration of mammals in the lower 48, and every day we would wake up early with anticipation on what we might see that day. Upon reaching the end of the trip, we were hit with three powerful realizations. First, what started here in Yellowstone 150 years ago is a blessing for humankind and is a testament to American values. Rather than being reserved for royalty or the wealthy, lands like this belong to the people. Second, for wildlife and outdoor enthusiasts, there is no greater place to experience than Yellowstone. Quite simply, everyone should make the time to experience this at some point in their lifetimes. Third, with nearly half of our year in the rear view, there is simply too much to explore with the time remaining, so difficult decisions will need to be made. Those decisions, however, can wait. We hope that you've enjoyed experiencing Yellowstone through our eyes. Until next time, take care and be well.